All right, folks, today we're going to be looking at a Kukri. This is the Mutiny from Kailash Blades, or Kailash perhaps. And I've always had a healthy respect for Kukris, but this one really in particular impressed me when I first took it out of the box. I'll tell you why. So this is going to be sort of in between a first impression and a final review by my personal standards because although I did some testing, it was not as much as I generally like to do to really fully test it out. I haven't done any wood chopping with it, although I did test it on one of the zombie heads from Zombie Go Boom. The style of cookery was used from the late 18th to the end of the 19th century. And the blade type in particular was used by Gurkhas during the Indian Rebellion of 1857. These are made in Nepal from leaf springs. That's 5160 steel, which has been differentially hardened. Uh, the website doesn't mention the tempering. I would like to know that, but other than that, there is a lot of information on the website, which I very much appreciate. Not everyone is as forthcoming with information about the handle materials, for example, that they use or how they make things. And they also mention that the steel is normalized. So that's an annealing process that produces a uniform fine grade structure. So it makes it less likely to fail under stress. You've got several different options for this one, for the handle. There, you can have buffalo horn, Indian rosewood, which is this one here, or white rosewood. The Indian rosewood has a nice dark grain, as you can see here. And apparently it doesn't change as much with different moisture as some other types of wood do. The hardware on this one here, I chose copper which is a custom option. So that's the bolster and the butt cap right here. And you can see where the tang was peened over that cap to secure it in place. The tang on these is what they on the website call a rat tail tang, which of course evokes negative associations because rat tail tangs are often used on cheapo wall hanger sword-like objects but there's nothing wrong with that as long as you do it well and don't like weld on a flimsy piece of mild steel for example so all that means really is that instead of it being a full tang that's the entire width of the handle it just means that the tang is narrower than that. Here's a picture to illustrate that. They're also called stick tangs. And as long as the steel quality is good and it's made of one piece, there's really no issue with that. It saves some weight. This one overall is very light. I'll talk more about that in a moment. But first, a look at the finish. This is the satin finish. And you have two other options, which are raw. So that's a forge finish except where they need to grind the shape of the blade and the edge. So parts of it would still have the scale from forging. The satin one here is what you see. So it's a relatively fine polish. You can see a bit of reflection there. It came with what looks like water stains on the blade. I don't know what kind of oil they use, but it seems to have left those marks on the surface. Uh, might have to polish that a little bit to get it off. I don't really mind. It's just cosmetic. There is no oxidation or anything. It just looks a little strange. And then there is the polished finish, which is a mirror polish. For the grind, you have several options. There's a standard grind, which is suitable for chopping, prying. You can you know, chop hardwood with it. Uh, then there is the heavy duty grind, which has an unconditional lifetime warranty. On the website it says, if you were looking to cut a bicycle in half, then <laughs> the heavy duty grind is your option. The handles are not covered by the lifetime warranty though, because they can't guarantee that the handle might not swell or crack when you bring it from one climate to another and the humidity changes drastically. So that's always something that you have to keep in mind. They're very often made quite thick and with a heavy duty grind to prevent people from just breaking stuff and then trying to get a new one. That has apparently happened a number of times with other makers. But this one here is the performance grind. So that is for martial arts, for 
finer cutting. There's the sharpest edge that they have, uh, which you can still chop with and baton with as well. And I can personally attest to the sharpness of this edge because as I was setting up the cameras to get started with the video, I just lightly bumped into the edge because I was holding it point down with the left hand. I was adjusting the tripod and just, just you know, lightly bumped it and it already drew blood. So yeah, that's definitely sharp. The phone book paper test is a little deceiving on this one because on some cuts it does go through pretty cleanly, on others it tears more. Like overall it tends to tear the paper more, but you know, the more I do this and the more different types of grind I test, the, the less I like the, the paper test because it can be really misleading because you can, you can cut paper just fine with a burr on the edge which, you know, wears down pretty quickly as you use it and then it, it's dull. And you can have a blade that has a very good overall blade profile and it's well shaped in such a way that it passes through material very easily, but it won't cut the paper cleanly. So yeah, in this case, I can definitely say it is very sharp. So for utility use, uh, especially for finer use, if you want to you know, hold onto the blade, do, do push cuts, uh, you can work with the point, of course, you can use the, the edge further down to slice them. In fact, you could, on, on a blade like this, you could even do kind of differential sharpening. You could put a very fine hair shaving edge on this whenever you, you need to do fine work with that part. And then for chopping, you could leave the top part a little sturdier. And uh, it's very well shaped overall. It has a fuller, as you can see, and it has a distal taper. It's probably too subtle to really see with the naked eye in the video, but the, the thickness right above the, the grip is six millimeters, and then it tapers down to between 4.5 to five millimeters. And like very close to the point, it's uh, 3.2. So that definitely helps with the balance. This is a 15 and a half inch version of the blade. There's also a 12 and a 14 inch version. And on the website, it says that this length here weighs 620 grams, but it's actually even lighter than that. Uh, on my scale, it weighs in at 483 grams or 17 ounces. So that's very, uh, that's the lightest cookery that I've ever handled personally. And uh, on the website, it says it's an incredibly agile, exhilarating feel in the hand. And, you know, normally I'm very skeptical of any kind of marketing on, on websites. They, they tend to overhype it. But in this case, I can 100% agree. That is an accurate description. It is, it feels amazing in the hand. It is by far the, the nicest handling cookery that I've ever tried. Because usually, you know, the, the ones that I've had so far are just these, these big, beastly, thick, heavy choppers that really focus more on, on being indestructible than feeling great in the hand. I mean, they're, they're all right, but this is a major difference. This is night and day. This, this feels like, this feels like a, a small sword, basically. And this really feels like it could be a fighting tool just as well as uh, an, an everyday tool for chopping under brush and you know, batoning wood and things like that. Very impressed with that. You have a lot of control over it. You can do quick wrist cuts very easily. And the shape of the handle, as usual with uh, traditional cookeries, is great. I like how it widens here toward the end. That really locks it in your hand. The cross section is very good. It's mostly oval. You have a riser and several grooves in the center to give you better grip. Uh, the only thing that I would like on, on this would be a guard, but apparently they're not traditional. However, you can request custom options. You can even let them make something from scratch based on your design. So they do custom work. You can always ask for particular changes on one of their models. And uh, yeah, so let's get to the cutting. So because of the design and the blade grind, I decided to test it really more like a sword than a chopping tool. And it works really well for that. You can throw quick cuts 
Again, you have plenty of control due to the shape of the grip. You can control the edge alignment very well. And it slices cleanly. It was easy to cut a tatami mat as well. So without a doubt, excellent as a light cutter. And then to test the durability, I went to town on a zombie head. They are fairly hard and way more likely to damage an edge than softwood, but it did it just fine. There was no damage on the edge at all. It's still nice and sharp, and overall it's still in perfect shape. The fit is remarkably tight on the grip and the bolster. Uh, nothing has loosened up, and there's no bending or, or chipping or anything like that. I would like to do some more tests with it, like softwood chopping, a bit of hardwood as well. It, it should be able to handle that. It's just, um, it's not really an abuse blade. Like you should stick to the reasonable. And here's the sheath. Appears to be a leather covered wooden core. You've got the belt loop right here, which is pretty large. So you can get a lot of belts through it, even if they're fairly wide, uh, very sturdy. So nice texture on it too. And the sheath is fairly light, but it has definitely has a solid feel to it. And it fits the cookery well. It feels very smooth as you sheath it. So there's no rough spots on the inside. And as you can see, holds tightly onto it. Quick to draw. So as I said, definitely impressed. If this is representative of the quality of their work overall, then absolutely go check them out. They, they have a number of other blades. They have modern designs too, some pretty cool looking ones. And uh, if this one, I can easily recommend. Uh, the price seems very reasonable for the quality that you're getting. And uh, this is the kind of blade that should last for a long time. Plus, as I said, you can customize it to your personal requirements, whether you want the, the standard or heavy duty edge or the performance edge. The performance edge I really like personally. For, for light cutting, it's amazing. The handling is really what I like most about it. And that's what distinguishes it from a lot of other cookeries, at least that I've handled. So yeah, link is down below. You can take a look there. Hope you found the review helpful and thanks for watching guys.